Alleluia, Alleluia, let the holy anthem rise, and the choirs of heaven chant it in the temple of the sky. Let the mountains skip with gladness, and the joyful valleys Good morning and welcome to Corpus Christi Parish here in St. Augustine, Florida. My name is Father Ed Murphy, the pastor, and I want to welcome all of our viewers on this glorious Easter day. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. And so we go ahead and continue on with our liturgy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, on this day, we, we rejoice that Christ our Savior has risen gloriously from the dead, conquering sin and death by his passion, by his a sacrificial offering to his heavenly father by his burial and then rising from the tomb. We have reason to have hope. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these holy mysteries, we call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, risen Son of God, you were anointed by God with the Holy Spirit and power. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, Son of God, you are the Paschal Lamb who redeems us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, mercy. have mercy. Lord Jesus, risen Son of God, you will come again to judge the living and the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he, is the, that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, 
and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. And now together we will read the sequence. Christians to, to the, the Paschal, Paschal victim, victim, offering, offering your, your thankful praises. praises. A, A lamb, lamb the sheep redeems, Christ who only is sinless, reconciles sinners to the Father. Death, Death and life have contended in that combat stupendous. The Prince of Life who died reigns immortal. Speak, Mary, declaring what you saw wayfaring, the tomb of Christ who is living, the glory of Jesus' resurrection, bright angels attesting, the shroud and napkin resting. Yes, Christ, my hope, has arisen. To Galilee he goes before you. Christ, indeed, from death is risen. Our new life obtaining. obtaining. Have mercy, Victor King, ever reigning. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, amen. And as a custom, we begin with the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. A happy Easter to all of you, and I mean that with all of my heart. Jesus is indeed risen. Alleluia. But my friends, I need to be honest with all of you. It is so hard to say these words when I look out into a church with practically no congregation. This will be my first Easter that I ever celebrated without those bright and joyful faces 
without those families that are united in the pews once or twice during the church year, without that annual Easter egg hunt that we typically have after one of our Masses on Easter, without the joy and the triumph of this special day. My heart is deeply sad, and on a day we're supposed to rejoice in the risen Lord. You realize these are historic times in the history of the church. Never in our history has anything stopped the congregation from attending the Holy Mass, especially during the highest and the most solemn times of the church, liturgical year. Despite plagues, wars, earthquakes, floods, drought, pestilence, and even persecutions, the Catholic Church always had her doors open for the faithful to congregate for the Holy Mass of Sacrifice. The people of God always found ways to gather for the Holy Eucharist, even when they had to go underground. Obviously, now we found another way to bring the Holy Mass to your home, your own home, through the internet and also, hopefully, maybe through TV. But we are stricken by a vicious pandemic that threatens our bodily health. And I know there are those who are out there that strongly believe that we should take a chance and just gather in our churches on this Easter Sunday and trust that God will protect his faithful. Yet my friends, we must use common sense for the safety of all of our parishioners and visitors. It is my firm belief though that God is allowing his children to be tested in their faith. And here is how I see it. We, if we believe that Jesus Christ, after suffering a horrific passion and death on the cross, rose triumphantly on the third day, do we not believe that after this pandemic has ended, we will also rise triumphantly? Are we not men and women of faith? Recall the words of Jesus, fear is useless, what is needed is trust. Do we trust the divine physician to heal our hearts and minds and souls as we endure this misery? Or are we going to become more cynical and agnostic and think that God has abandoned us? You see, Easter is a time of hope. And this hope is absolutely critical for all of us who are in great anxiety about the future of this country and of the world. Naturally, we worry about our jobs, our livelihoods, our health, our families, and we wonder when life will go back to the way it was before. But my friends, I say this with great passion and love. Our society is deeply sick, spiritually. Many of our Christians have lost their faith. Many have turned away from God and his commandments, especially the fifth and the sixth commandment. Many have made material things and money more important than eternal life. Jesus, our risen Savior, is a divine physician who is trying to heal the wounds of this broken society. Millions and millions of people are walking wounded. It is a time that we open our, our, our eyes and our hearts to the love God wants to give us during this time of suffering fear. Yes that God wants to give us in this time of suffering and fear. The risen Lord offers us a peace unlike any kind of peace that the world may offer because what the world offers is a temporary, not a lasting peace. The peace that Jesus wants to give us is a lasting peace. And it will help us to endure all things for the sake of Christ and his holy church. I'd like to share with you of a story I'm reminded of, of a young man who came home from a prisoner war, of war camp. He had been reported back home as being killed in action. His family and his buddies and even his girlfriend had mourned him as dead and then more or less got over the grief as time went on. They had all loved him, but they had in effect written him off out of their lives. Upon his arrival back in town after being released from the camp, Everyone was in shock and surprised that he was indeed alive and well. His girlfriend was engaged to marry someone else. 
Moreover, he didn't seem like the boy who had gone off to war. He was thin, haggard, and he seemed haunted. However, he was now mature, self-possessed, and astonishingly happy. He hadn't smiled much as a kid and rarely joked. Now he was witty and ebullient at all times. A quiet kid had become an outgoing adult man. He didn't fit into the patterns of relationships that he had left behind. Quite the contrary, his happiness and maturity were unsettling to the people around him. He congratulated his former girlfriend on her coming marriage and shook the hands cordially with the fiance. Everyone said, there's something wrong with this kid. Now his family went to the parish priest. The priest observed, there, sure, there certainly is something wrong with him. He has risen from the dead and now he acts like a saint. Maybe during this pandemic, we all need to look into the mirror and ask ourselves, do I really have a mature faith? Does the risen Christ truly live in me? If we are mature in our faith, we can endure all things for the sake of Jesus Christ. If we are mature in our faith, we will not complain or moan and groan about the fact that we are confined to our homes and have to spend all day with our spouses and children and grandchildren. And if we are mature in our faith, we will be people of hope who will wait patiently and always be ready to serve others. And there's lots of people today, and you know that, brothers and sisters, that need our love and service. If we are mature in our faith, we will allow the Lord Jesus to mold us and make us a happy people, a new people. Can you imagine that in the midst of all this? It's there for the taking, my brothers and sisters. Even though we cannot gather as a people of God in this church each week and for the time being, we know that the sacraments are still available to those who desire them. The doors of the church are open for those who want to come and visit. The sacraments of reconciliation and Holy Eucharist are available to those who desire to be united to Christ more deeply. Keep in mind, as a shepherd of souls, I am convinced of the words that St. Paul wrote in his letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 35 to 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are all being killed, and uh, <clears throat> we are killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Despite the ferocity of this virus, I want to repeat that nothing, and I mean nothing, will ever keep us from practicing our faith. In fact, in the face of this evil contagion, our Christian response should be one of heroic faith, of hope and love. And I also want to stress that Christ never abandons us, even in the depths of our misery and pain. In fact, when we are at our lowest and when we are suffering, it is Jesus who is very close to us and he wants to offer us that Easter joy of peace. So, yes, let us rejoice in Jesus, the risen Christ. Remember, he conquered sin and death. He will conquer this pandemic and the destruction is left behind. But we as his brothers and sisters, need to be reconciled with him, at peace with him. And we need to be wait patiently on the Lord. He is our Father, and we are his children, whom he loves so deeply. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
now on this Easter day. It is a custom <clears throat> for us to renew our baptismal vows. Dear brethren, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism, by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. I do. And all his works. I do. And all his empty show. I do. <clears throat> do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins? the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ our Jesus our Lord. Amen. On this holiest of days, when we celebrate Jesus' resurrection from the death to new life, we ask that God bring new life to us, those we love, and the whole world. For the church, that we may proclaim the hope and promise of Christ's resurrection in everything we do, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those entrusted with leading their countries, that they may work to bring peace to nations ravaged by war and prosperity to areas devastated by poverty, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose lives are threatened by violence, chronic illness, or sudden trauma, that in their ordeal they may be embraced by God, the source of everlasting life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who were welcomed into the church at the Easter Vigil, that they may grow in faith and holiness and be a light to us all of the constant renewal of the body of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, hear our prayer. For all our men and women in uniform in this country and overseas, that they may be kept safe and return home soon, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those affected by the coronavirus, especially for those who have died, that they may know your peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us in this assembly, that we may always rejoice in the Lord's resurrection and realize the salvation he won for us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear <clears throat> our prayer. Especially for all life, from conception to a natural death, but for those all life at its most vulnerable stage, the very old and the young in the womb, that those in the womb may be kept safe from the Holocaust of abortion, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, For all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. God of life and love, you have redeemed us through the sacrifice of your Son. Your generosity with life and love is without bound. Hear the prayers we offer and grant them in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now be seated for our offertory.
Pray, brother, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day above all to laud you, yet more glorious, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world, and by dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising has restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. you created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you have life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sack might be offered to your name therefore lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit grace you make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your son our lord jesus christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to so saying, take this all of you and drink for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which he poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When you claim your death.
for, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven as we look forward to his second coming. We offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with the elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Philippe, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the risen Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you, Jack. Peace be with you. No, Jack.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. that you can make a spiritual communion. There, there are certain prayers that you can find in your missalettes where you can unite yourself spiritually to Jesus and it's a very good way to receive the Lord in your heart. I hope our viewers will take advantage of those beautiful prayers of spiritual communion into my heart. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today I would like to just uh, say thank you for all of our many uh, parishioners who have mailed in their contributions and dropped them off. It is, and some of you have uh, really helped us out in a very big way. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of you. And just a reminder, if you want to contribute to our parish, uh, you can mail your contribution to the uh, parish office or drop it off in the mail slot uh, that's on the door of the church or the office, I say. Or if you're ever coming visiting here at the church, you can offer, put it in the uh, offering basket. Uh, on behalf of myself and Deacon Jack, 
and our staff here at Corpus Christi, we want to wish you, our viewing audience, and particularly our parishioners and visitors, and all our kind friends, we want to wish you a very blessed and a very holy and a joy-filled Easter. And yes, I do wish that for you all in this time of crisis. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The masses ended, go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia.